Good morning, you sentient nerds. All right. Um, not only have I been away for a bit because you know I was going on vacation, but I realized before I started procrastinating, I wanted to get right back into chemical process analysis by Richard M. Felder. <clears throat> and today, instead of doing a problem, we're gonna go over something that's very important, which is called linear interpolation. Okay. The good thing about linear interpolation, it's very useful. And you only need algebra. So even if you're not taking an engineering class, this may be useful to you. So we're going to talk about what this is and what it's useful for. So let's say you have some data set, right? You have like a plot, y is a function of x. You have some data. Maybe you're doing an experiment. Yeah, let's say you have some data like, I don't know, heat as a function of temperature. You might have velocity as a function of viscosity of a fluid or something like that. And you realize that there's this correlation, this linear correlation. Or another example is in this bad boy, in heat transfer, or in thermodynamics, you got steam tables, but you turn to the back and you see, oh, look, properties, and you have temperature, right? And it's nice and evenly spaced out, 100, 150, 200. So let's say you want, I don't know, let's say viscosity at 305 degrees. Well, look, there's 300 and 350, but I want it at 305 degrees, okay? That's what engineering is all about. You want it at a specific temperature. Well, one way to do that is to use linear interpolation, all right? So this is the application. So as you saw, these are the different correlations. And if I make a relationship as such, I can make a nice line kind of like that. Right? So we have y equals mx plus b. And now if I have it, let's say this is 300 and this is 400, right here and right here, well, using the slope, I can solve for it at anything in between. That's why it's called interpolation. You're interpolating between two known points. Okay, in future classes, we're going to use different methods to become more exact. But right now, this is just an estimate. That's the difference between science and engineering, in which science is a very theoretical, exact approach, and engineering is using estimates and approximations. And the better and better your math is, the more accurate your engineering calculation is going to be. So today, we're going to derive the equation to get linear interpolation okay so how do you think we should do that i challenge you to think about this by yourself for a little bit and see if you can derive it yourself okay your hint is you're going to use slope okay so let's pick some data points let's say this is x1 y1 right here and this is x2 y2 and our interpolated point that we want to find out is going to be x, which is unknown, and y, which is unknown. Okay, so how are we going to get that? Okay, so we can write some relationships between slope. Remember, slope is rise over run. So, okay, so how can we do this? We can arbitrarily say that, well, not arbitrary, we can say that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is one slope, right? And we can say that another, another slope is going to be y2 minus y over x2 minus x. And as you noticed, since this is a line, that's why it's called linear interpolation, we can set these two slopes equal to each other. So I'm going to do that as such. So I'm going to say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that's the first m, is equal to this m, y2 minus y minus x. All right. So what we got to do is solve for y as a function of x in order to interpolate the line in between. So we have y and x. So doing as one of my professors calls 
uh, mathematics, gymnastics, or something like that. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna multiply that. Y2 minus Y1 over, I'm gonna multiply that. X2 minus X over X2 minus X1, which is equal to Y2 minus Y. And if you can see, if I move this guy over, and if I flip one of these signs, I'm gonna get um, <clears throat> y as a function of x is equal to, uh, I'm gonna do y2, right? So that's plus y2, plus, I'm gonna flip this, this sign, x minus x2 times y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Cool. So in other words, if I plug in two values for these two points that I know the values of, and I wanna know at a point in between, for so for example, 305, then I can solve for whatever value that is. Okay, so you just plug and chug. You may notice that it is actually different than the equation in the textbooks because I use a different slope. So I challenge you to using the similar approach, solve for this version of the equation, which is more commonly used. However, they should give the same exact results, but this is just more commonly used. And like I said, in future videos, I'm going to be talking about how to do this for different sets of data. What if your equations are exponential or logarithmic? Mm, think about that. So we might be using some MATLAB. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this video. We're just continuing. I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to do the examples because they're very tedious and boring. Um, pretty much, it's a lot of plugging and chugging, as in you have some data and you plug it in. I think I'm going to skip that for now and go on to some more fundamental chemical engineering. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.